is welcome to my channel or should I say welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since my last video, actually if I remember correctly it was back in December last year. I used to make a video per week and then suddenly I stopped making uh, regular videos and uh, I made just a couple since last year. If you are following my channel you know that I sold my previous house and I started building a new house. Unfortunately, we've been scammed, so people took our money, uh, took it, and they didn't uh, pay the people that were supposed to uh, build the house. And this generated quite a lot of issues, a lot of economical issues, a lot of emotional issues, and our house took a quite big delay to be built. It is finally built. I'm living it, uh, in it since uh, April uh, this year, so it will be now four months almost. And I have to say that despite all the struggles, I am extremely happy about the house. I was fearing that with everything that happened, uh, we wouldn't be uh, happy in this house, we wouldn't feel comfortable, but contrary to that, we are really okay and we are now trying to forget what happened. There are legal actions, there are things going on, but I want to concentrate on the positive, seeing the glass half full and enjoy now the house. You can easily understand that with everything that happened, making videos was the least of my priorities. And also in the head, I mean, I was not feeling well, I was not in a good place. The fear about the economical aspect, about everything. I mean, for a lot of months, we've been real in a kind of uncertainty about what would happen with our situation, with our life. Now that we're, we are in the house and we are sorting things out, I feel like I want to resume my YouTube channel. Honestly speaking, I'm missing making videos. I'm lazy. I could have started making videos again since uh, a few weeks ago, but I have to fight with my laziness to uh, again start making video, uh, editing, uh, uploading and everything that goes within. Talking about cars, I'm driving the Polestar 2 BST 230 since November 6th last year, so it's gonna be now nine months and 15,000 kilometers. So I think it's a good amount of time to uh, make a review about the car, to tell you how I feel about this car. If you know me, you know that I change car regularly. I get bored very quickly about cars. I always want something different, something new. The Polestar 2 is my fourth electric car. I got a Tesla Model S, then I got the Audi e-tron S Sportback, then I got the Tesla Model 3 Long Range, and now I'm driving the Polestar. How do I feel about the Polestar? Honestly speaking, mixed feeling. Obviously, there are things I like and there are things I dislike about that car. So let's start about the things that I like. The first thing is the look. This car looks good. It is a little bit weird talking about proportion because you have to know that this car is built on the 40, the Volvo XC40 platform. So it is a little bit raised up. So it's kind of weird looking, but uh, it looks good nevertheless. And in, specifically in this BST execution with the 21 inch rims, with the exclusive Nebula green color and also into the cabin uh, there is a kind of exclusivity compared to a regular Polestar 2 because uh, the seats are in Alcantara and the steering wheel as well. The second thing I like about the Polestar 2 BST it's uh, the kind of exclusivity and I'll come back about it a little bit later on the things that I dislike 
So the BST 230, as the numbers implies, is a limited edition of 230 units, which means that I'm currently driving a kind of exclusive car. And this is something that I like. I never crossed another BST in my way for the last nine months, except when I've been to a Polestar gathering a couple of months ago here in Switzerland, where I saw a second one in black. So exclusivity, it's something that I do appreciate in my Polestar 2 BST. The third thing that I like about the Polestar is the Android automotive infotainment. While it is still not on par with Tesla, for me, Tesla are the king of in-car infotainment up to date. So the Android Automotive with Google integration is quite good. I like to have the maps, the Google Maps integrated into the car. So when you set up a destination, it takes about consideration the range and it gives you also all the available charging station. Same as Tesla, same uh, as other brands as well, but Tesla are the ones that are doing the best. And then I think that Android Automotive are quite good. And finally, the fourth thing that I like about my Polestar 2 BST 230 are the performances. This is a dual motor, 476 horsepower, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, officially in 4.4 seconds, but I managed to do 4.1 with the winter tires, the winter wheel that are 20 inch as opposed to the 21 summer set. So performances are really quite good. I never had any issue about it. There are There is plenty of power into this car. And now let's talk about the things that I dislike about my Polestar. The first thing I come back about the exclusivity. As a reminder, this is supposed to be a limited version of only 230 units in the world. Now, the fact that you can still buy a Polestar 2 230 BST on the Polestar website tells a lot about the fact that they are probably struggling to sell all the unit. So the Polestar 2 BST has been introduced almost one year ago and the fact that they didn't sell all 230 unit, units it's a little bit worrying to me. And the old Polestar situation is a little bit worrying. They are struggling to making their numbers. They are struggling to get on the market the Polestar 3, the Polestar 4. Um, I think they have some software issues talking about the Polestar 3. I've been able to test drive the Polestar 3 a couple of weeks ago. I really did like it a lot. It is an SUV that I would buy today, but I wasn't allowed to film, I wasn't allowed to take any picture, especially about the software. And again, this tells a lot about the struggling that this company is facing now. Let's be clear, I hope that Polestar succeed. I like the brand. They are really a very cool, young brand. I like what they're doing and I truly hope that they will succeed. And also relying for a couple of years on the Polestar 2, that is a sedan in a world where unfortunately the majority of people buys SUV, it's a very risky situation. So hopefully they're gonna put on the market the Polestar 3, the Polestar 4, which are SUV kind of. So hopefully they're gonna sell more volumes, they're gonna start to be profitable and they're gonna last. The second thing that I really don't like about my car is the resale value. So in general, EV uh, are struggling now, especially in the used market. When you wanna resell a used EV uh, nowadays, uh, you have issues. And on top of that, Polestar is now giving here in Switzerland 7,000 Swiss francs uh, of a special discount if you buy a new car. That means that I'm struggling now to resell my one year, almost one year old 
Polestar 2 BST. So EV in general in the used EV market uh, uh, is struggling right now and this is something that I really don't like about my car. The third thing I don't like about my car is the range. So range is poor. I knew that. My BST is based on the model year 23. When Polestar introduced the model year 24 of the Polestar 2, they made significant changes in the engine, in the motors, so a range uh, got better. But unfortunately, the BST is based on the previous model year. This is a choice that I made, so it is my choice. But now I'm kind of regretting it because while I do prefer the exclusivity of the BST, the range is very poor. Um, I've been told that uh, I took the car in winter, so that was the reason. In summer it would get better, but it didn't really get any better. When I charge the car at 90%, I have a predicted range of 360 kilometers, which in real time, you can take away uh, 100 kilometers, so it is really not enough. Since I'm charging now at home, it is not, honestly, not a problem at all. With the way I use the car, I work three days per week at home and two days at the office, so it is not really an issue for me. But whenever I plan to do a road trip, I have to take into consideration that I would have to stop a little, a little bit more than if I was driving, let's say, a Tesla. And finally, the fourth thing that I don't really like about my car are the constant bugs. Again, I should know better because Polestar being a young brand, I should expect glitches, bugs, and things that would not work very well. So while I said that I like the Android Automotive with Google integration, I'm not really happy about the constant bugs I have. But I guess that in this era where software plays a very big role in cars, and we can see that a lot of car manufacturers are struggling actually to get their software right in a car, this is something that we should expect and especially on a brand company like Polestar. All in all, I'm quite happy with my car. I like the exclusivity, I like the performances, I like the infotainment, but I feel like I wanna take um, a, a break now from driving a purely EV cars and I wanna try some things new. Should I buy a car today, which one would it be? Since a couple of months, since last year now, I'm really attracted by the Volvo XC60 T8 Recharge, especially in the Polestar edition. I was saying in the past that I didn't really like SUV, but I guess it's me being now in my 50s and me needing now space in my car. You know, when you go to Ikea, when you have to charge some things in your car, I feel most of the time that I have to make compromises. I'm lacking space. If I'm bringing people into the car, for example, the poster too has a very cramped cabin. So that Volvo XC60, Hybrid is something that is really talking to me at this moment. I like the duality. I like to be able to do uh, around 70 kilometers. In real life, it will be a little bit less. I know that. In pure electric, I like the fact that uh, if the battery is empty, you still got a two liter engine with 312 horsepower. Combined, it is 455 horsepower. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9, which is quite respectable for an SUV. And looking around, you know that I used to be a big Audi guy, but I'm so disappointed about how Audi is dealing now with EV and all the new models that feels so cheap, so poorly made. Uh, I had a look at the new uh, Q4, that's so cheap made, so plastic. Uh, I had a look at the new Q6, it's not that bad, but it's so expensive. I was excited about the new A5 S5, but trying to configure a new S5, now it starts at 100,000 Swiss francs, which is 
insane if you ask me. A correctly specced Audi S5 would cost me 130k. In my actual situation, with my house situation, this is something that I simply cannot afford anymore. I lowered my leasing, monthly leasing budget for cars by almost half. So everything that is now uh, premium cars, I'm not even thinking about. So we go back to that XC60 that uh, cross all the boxes uh, about what I like in the cars. I like the shape. I like the performances, I like the fact that it's a, a hybrid. The only thing that I dislike a little bit on the cabin, uh, the, the, the central screen is a little bit too small, is a 9 inch, uh, as opposed to the 11 inch that I'm getting into my Polestar, and as opposed to the 14.5 inch that you start to get now in quite a lot of modern cars. So should I buy a car now, absolutely today, it would be the Volvo XC60. What do you think about it? I'm addressing to the one who knows me since a couple of years now. What car would you see me driving? What car do you think I should get next? And also talking about videos, what kind of videos would you like to see next? I'm planning to do a driving video of my Polestar 2 BST and I'm planning to do also a measurement of the 0 to 100 kilometers an hour just to see if the one that I get with the uh, in-house software of the Polestar, the 4.1 seconds, were accurate or not. Thanks for watching this video. I truly hope that you did like it. If you did, please click on the thumb up. That would help me to get back on track with my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.